Hello everyone, Jonathan here from TNT Games LLC, and in this video we're going to be creating an outline effect using geometry nodes. This will take a mesh, duplicate the mesh, scale the mesh along its face normals, invert the face normals of the duplicate outline mesh, and we'll also set the material to a new outline material, which will have an emissive effect. Let's get started. First off, we're using Blender 4.4.3, and we have the default scene with the default cube. And what we're going to do is in the modifiers tab, we're going to add a new geometry nodes. And then we'll click new. Then in this bottom corner here, we'll drag up. And then we will change this to geometry node editor. I'm going to press the N key to close that window. And we'll zoom in. And what we want to do is we want to take the geometry and we want to duplicate it. So I'm going to drag off of this output point. I'm going to type in join geometry. And we'll set that over here at the end. And then we're also going to drag this off. And we're going to set position. Zoom out some. And then we'll drag that into there. And if we move that around, we can see that we have a duplicate of the mesh. But we don't want to set the actual position of all the points. We want to change them along the face normals. So I'm going to set that back to zero. And I'm going to hold shift and press A, or you can click on add, and then you can search there. But I'm just going to hold shift, press A, and then we're just going to start typing in the normal. We want geometry read normal. We can drag off of this, multiply. And then we will put the normal into here. And now, as you can see, we can scale along the face normals. I'll set those back to 1. And then I just want a float value. I'm going to hold shift and press A, and then search for value. And then we want an input constant value. This will give us a float. And if I put that into there, I can adjust this, and then it will all be equal along the face normals. We can also take the group input, and then we can shift and D to duplicate. Move that down here. And we want to get this value, but I don't really have the ability to put that into there. So instead, I'm going to press the N key. And we're going to scroll down to Group Sockets in the Group tab. Click the plus button. Click on Input. Scroll down. It's a float. And we want the default to be 0.2. And we want 0 to be the minimum. And I think this can be 1 for the maximum. And then we can drag that into there. We can delete the value node. Also, we need to adjust that so the geometry is first. So just drag that up, and everything's fine again. Now you'll see we have socket and we can adjust the value between 0 and 1. And I want to rename that from socket to thickness. So this is great, but maybe whenever you set that to 0, we don't want to spawn another cube or another mesh. So we're going to do a Boolean check. Since we have the thickness, I'm going to duplicate that, Shift and D. Then we're just going to drag off of thickness and type in greater than. And then this is a Boolean result. So we want switch. And then we can switch the geometry. So we move this over. 
and then we'll just drag that in there. Hold control and right click to drag and delete that. So that's going to look a little messy here, but we'll drag these down and drag that up. Maybe not down that far. <laughs> And then we'll put that into true. How will we know that this is actually working? Uh, we'll just drag out from this top right corner and click the top left corner and click on spreadsheet. Then if we drag this out, you'll see that we have more points. Drag it down to zero and it's only showing the cube. We can drag and close that. Now what we want to do is set the material for the outline. So we'll hold shift, press A, look for material, and set material. Let's put that right there. And we currently don't have a material set, so let's go to the material tab. And where we have materials, click the plus icon, click on new. Then we will rename this to outline. And I'm going to set the roughness to one. And I'm also going to set the base color to black for now. And while we're down here, we'll set the back face cooling as well as set the viewport so we can see it in the viewport. Now in our geometry nodes, let's set that material to outline. Go back to the modifiers, increase that. You'll notice that we're not seeing anything. Go up to the material preview, click the arrow for more options. Then you can set it to material. And this isn't what we want because we want to see the object as well as the outline. So we need to flip the normals of the cube. And this is pretty easy to do. I'm just going to drag these over. I'm just going to drag out of the set material and then look for flip mesh. And now as you can see, the outline mesh normals have been flipped. So we can see the inner mesh as well as the duplicate outline mesh. You can drag this over, or you can drag it down to zero and it won't exist anymore. Technically, that's all we need for the outline effect. But if you want to change the color from within the modifier, we're going to have to go to the Object Data tab, scroll down to the Color Attribute, click on the plus icon. We're going to change this to Outline Color and then click Add. And then inside the modifier, go down to Group Sockets, click the plus icon, click on Input, change this to Outline Color, scroll down, change the type to Color, default attribute will be Outline Color, and I'll just leave the default color of black, you can change that to whatever color you want. Shift A, look for input, and then we want the group input, and then just drag the outline color into the group output. Next, we'll need to go over to the top left here, go to the shader editor, and Shift A, we'll look for input attribute. We'll change the name to outline color. And this is case sensitive, so make sure it matches exactly what you have there. And then we'll put the color into the base color. And then if you want to see the color actually update, you have to go into render preview or rendered mode. In solid shading, you can go to the drop down here and click on attribute, but it's showing the whole object as the same color. You can store the color attributes per object if you want to. Which I can show you what that looks like here. Basically, you have to store the named attribute. Then we'll hold Shift and press A, and then look for Attribute. And then we want to store named attribute. We're going to set the value to color. And we'll leave it on point. We will select Outline Color. And then this will just be whatever color you want to see. And if we drag this over, and we'll put that here. I'll drag this, 
and drag that there. Then we'll hold control, and then we'll right click and drag. The whole object will turn black for a moment. Then shift A, attribute, and then look for read named attribute. Then we'll stick the attribute into the outline color, change the value to color, and then select outline color. Now you can see the attributes in the viewport. You still have to be in attribute uh, mode in order to see that. But now you can change the color of your outline and you can change thickness. Now let's make it fancy. I want to make this outline glow. Let's go back to the shader editor and then I'm just going to drag the attribute over there and look for the emission category. Drag the color into the color and then I'm going to set this to 16. Now let's go into rendered preview mode and it's technically emissive but there's no glow. And for us to do that, we need to go into the compositor. And for us to see the effect in the viewport, we need to change the rendered preview mode. Uh, then we'll scroll down to the compositor section. And you can change it from disabled, which won't show the effect at all. You can set it to camera if you only want to view the effect while in camera mode. Or you can click on always, which we're going to have here and it will always be rendered no matter what view mode you're in, as long as you're in the render preview or rendered mode. Then let's drag the render layers over and the compositor over shift A, look for glare. And just set that there. We're going to change it from streaks to bloom. And I'm just going to set that to low. And we're not seeing anything. That's because in the compositor, we need to use nodes. And now we can see the effect. You can adjust the threshold for more or less. I'm just going to leave that at one. And you can change the size of the bloom, which I like to keep it kind of lower. You can change the strength as well. And that's pretty much it. And as you can see, if you change it to camera or disabled, and I'm going to set it to camera, and then I'm going to click the camera button here, and now you can only see the effect in the camera. Or you set it to disabled, and you won't see it in any render mode. And you can hold shift when dragging the value for a finer control and you can change the color and if you want the effect to be active on another object like if I did shift A and then I did a circle as an example and add modifier geometry node and then we'll select the geometry node and we can change the size here uh, the outline color doesn't exist yet so we need to click this button and then you can set the color And that's how you set up the outline effect. And that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching and hope you have a good day.